I support Young Women's Trust because I was once a young woman who needed guidance and there was none. There was really none to be had. And because there was none to be had, it took me a really, really long time to find myself as a person. My beginnings were really quite humble. And um, as you can see, I'm not really that young anymore. But uh, back in the time when I was growing up, we were very much known as a working class family. Uh, we lived in a council house. And, but my mother was um, ferociously ambitious for us as children, particularly me as a girl, because new opportunities were opening up for girls at that time. Um, hadn't really got their grounding yet, but we could see that things were changing. And she was so keen to make things happen. But unfortunately, the dreaded spectre of cancer moved into our house when I was seven, and it took her away. Yeah. I, I was nine when my mum died, almost 10. Uh, I think I had a kind of inkling that something like that, this might happen, although nobody ever talked about death then. So I didn't talk about cancer or death. And I suppose in my mind, I'd already made a decision that I could take care of myself and not only myself, but I could take care of my dad and my brother and I was going to take her place. It was now all going to be down to me. And to my dad's horror, I started to decorate. Um, that didn't work. I started to cook. That didn't work very well either. I was really way too young, of course, to know how to do any of these things. And in the end, because my mother had set me, uh, or encouraged me to take these exams for this very good school, my dad sent me to the school because he thought it was going to be best for me to be with women and girls. Unfortunately, having got into the school, I then had other ideas. I, of course, missed her terribly. I didn't understand why I was, because by now I was nine, um, and I didn't really understand why I had to live away from home. I missed my dad very much and my brother. Um, so I got off to really quite a bad start. Uh, and I thought I was so responsible and so capable. I could do anything. I was like the heroine of a novel, if you like, when I was really just a child. Um, and so I went horribly off the rails, horribly. So I was naughty and really sort of quite difficult. Uh, and then one day I arrived when I thought, OK, this is enough. Nobody, still nobody's listening. I'm obviously not being naughty enough. So I need to run away. And I did. Uh, one February night, in the depths of winter. We had about five uniforms at the time. So I put on all five uniforms and my friend was with me too. And we put on all five of our uniforms with a big cloak over the top and hat. And off we went across the downs in Bristol, not very safe. Um, and I don't think we even really knew where we were going to be honest, but all the girls had collected the money together and chocolate and all kind of things that they had in their little midnight feast bags to send us off on our journey. And we're halfway across the downs and the police turned up next to us and we heard this little voice go, Madams? Madams? I was only 14 at the time. <laughs> Madams? Uh, and we were terrified. Absolutely terrified. We just kept stiffly walking on until they got out of the car and asked us if they could escort us back to the school, uh, which they did. I didn't know at that time on this Saturday night that I was going to be expelled on the Thursday anyway, that the authorities and in their greater wisdom had decided that I shouldn't be there any longer. I was too disruptive. Um, and so I needed to go home to my dad, which is where I wanted to be. I just by pure chance, really, I got a job temping at the local TV station. And that, that was in Bristol. And that led me to go on to a job at Thames Television, which was a permanent job. And I started to work in drama. Uh, on programs, a program you might well have heard of is The Bill. Uh, and 
I got into story structure and drama and characterization and all these things that were really important. And of course, I was still reading a lot at that time. And I started to discover that I had an ambition. Uh, I didn't even realize at that time that it was an ambition to write. I was just working with the scripts in front of me and loving working with the words and the structure, the dialogue, the whole thing. And then I decided to write a script of my own. And an agent said, I gave it to an agent, um, and he said, you should think about turning this into a book. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. Uh, got it horribly wrong, but I tried again. And so I feel, you know, all our experiences are, are even if you don't meet the right answer, the first time you try, it doesn't mean that you're wrong in what you want to do. It's just that you haven't done it the right way yet or you haven't come across the right person yet to help you further it. And I really did learn that when I was starting to write. And, and I was lucky because I got um, the right people behind me quite quickly. I mean, I say quite quickly, it did take two or three years. It wasn't like two or three weeks. Um, and I know when you're really young that two or three years seems like a lifetime. Uh, but it did happen and, and I grew in confidence. And my first book was published and now I've had a few more published since then. I support Young Women's Trust because I was once a young woman who needed guidance and there was none. There was really none to be had. And because there was none to be had, it took me a really, really long time to find myself as a person. And one of the most important things about this organization is that they are there to help you. And how you can help them is just by helping them. Do what you can to be with them and forward their calls. Speak with them, speak for them, work with them, work for other women. And it's so rewarding to do things for other people. It's amazing what it does for you.